Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, February 28th. I hope you're having a fantastic start to your week. Well, news headlines over the weekend, if you had been watching futures, which I don't do that often. I always check them uh, on Sunday night, but for the most part, I kind of leave it alone. But wow, we have been all over the map. News headlines keep um, coming out. We have additional sanctions, restrictions, um, restricted air spaces, more support going into Ukraine and trying to restrict um, trying to restrict Russia. So as those things come out, they get digested as to how that's actually going to play out in our market. We can see that across uh, the globe, it has had a very negative impact, kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. A lot of rhetoric out of, um, out of Russia that is pretty, uh, I think, pretty scary, and it's causing... <laughs> A lot of analysts and uh, to to just be incredibly cautious here as they wait for the next move. So, but all that being said, look at this candle. So this is the overnight session. Take this is the ES. So the S and P futures 500, but it's the futures. So this you know runs over the night. And when I went to bed last night, we were down like 600 and some points. And actually, I shouldn't say that when I last looked at my phone, because Lord knows. I stay up all night. Um, anyway, coming right back up, pushing back up, and moving in a much more um, uh, productive manner here. And you can kind of see that it's still pretty choppy, but definitely the upward trend right now is taking place. Banking so, a market update, S&P future. Let me just go ahead and turn Charles off there. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is, a, this is a nice little look here, but I cannot stress enough how cautious we need to be because we don't know when those headlines are going to drop we don't know what um what move another country is going to make that's going to affect us energy is um you know kind of just sitting still waiting trying to figure out what's going on sanctions were not placed on a lot of that or wasn't placed on that energy from us but uh some other i thought this is kind of a cool thing british petroleum came out and said that they will no longer deal with russia Kind of interesting to see if we see any others follow on that. But uh, XLE kind of just waiting to see what's going to happen. And if you look at XLE on a daily chart, it's a really pretty daily chart. Look at the squeeze that we have going on. Inside candle, 3, 8, uh, over the 20 squeeze. And this morning, sitting in just neutral. Uh, not you know, We're sitting right at the top of this candle. So this is a great one to play either with equity or with options, I would go with the 70s, the 41470s, and I would use the um, either the opening range break or use the close of this candle. I know if you got into this before um, Friday before the close, and energy is definitely a good place to be during all of this volatility. Um, gold, I have a very, I have one contract left of gold. Gold is another one. Uh, if we look at the futures here, you can see that we've uh, well off of the highs again. So this kind of candle looks just a flip of um, of the spy as some of that fear comes out. But still, it is in a higher open, higher close as of right now. We'll watch gold. I have that little hedge in there just in case. But that is definitely turned into a flight to safety. Okay, but let's go and take a look at some other stocks. We saw several last week. I had quite a little list here. I've narrowed it down. But Square continues to intrigue me. They had earnings, big bullish engulfing candle uh, going in. They have the um, uh, a bullish gap here, and we're sitting just above the 34, coming up across previous resistance. I like this over the close from Friday and up here to test the um, the 50 period moving average. So my entry would be 120.70. Or you can do an opening range break, but if it's inside this candle here from uh, Friday, I'd be a little bit more cautious. But 120.70 would be my entry. It'd stop out pretty tight there. If it closes below 119.80, I would be a little hesitant to think that maybe that's going to uh, pull right back in. But my initial target is 121.05, break this candle, and then the 50 period moving average would be my next target on that one. All right, so that is square. Next, 
healthcare sector has been doing and performing very, very well. ABBV was one that several traders were talking about last week in the room. You can see it's beautiful climb, uptrend, and we're keeping the three away from the eight there. Might want to see a little bit of a pause in here, but definitely want to keep on your watch this week. We have a little bit of a gap, um, but we had a lot of stocks that gap there on Friday. So keep a very close eye on that. But I like the look of ABVV overall very strong and working on a breakout. My entry would be at 149.54 for the 414.150 call. I like an entry at 149.54, a stop around 146.05, and with my first target being 150.36, that's the previous high right there, and then it becomes a breakout trade. Another one that we've been dealing with, is, or another sector that we've been talking about, and I'm going to go through a couple other names in this, but the industrial sector has been doing very well. So you can um, you know, pull up that sector on FinViz. You can go by groups and look for the, the sector of uh, industrial stocks. 3M is the one that caught my eye because of this nice reversal. So really beat up, right? So super beat up, reversal, a nice volume continuation on nice volume and we have a gap here to work with so this one is a little bit different because it is well below all of the moving averages other than this three and eight all of the larger moving averages but looking for continuation in this sector 3m uh, on this one i like the 414 uh oh wait a minute i did not type that in right i mistyped it here online the 414.155 call is the one I like, and I like an entry around 150.51. I would close it on, I would stop out on a close below the 3MA. That would just kind of tell me that maybe it's not going to continue on there, but we're looking for a gap fill with a target of 154.11 and then targeting the 20 moving period moving averages. All right, several others look really good. A couple that we talked about last week FCX just charged right along. We had talked about it early in the day, and then I didn't go back and check it until it was well too long for me to go and take a look. LLY is one that's been mentioned in the room as well. This in the healthcare sector, I love this over the 50. Live Nation, this has been on our watch list here a couple of times. Beautiful, um, you know, strength being shown there on Friday after that huge move, earnings win on Thursday. So take a look at live. See if we get a break out of that 127.75. Back to the industrials. Looking at Nucor, right? We did. We all talked about this one too. Totally missed it um, when it was when we were would have been able to get into it without chasing. But now look for a an opening range break on this one. Probably just a day trade after those two really big moves, but looking very well. VMware. Well, this one just kind of popped up. Um, again, another one pretty beat up, and it looks like here this was a bear flag. We're going to see if we get some consolidation uh, moving to the side. We're now past earnings. See if we get the move back to the top side. I like this over uh, Friday's high. I know that's quite a ways up there. But, um, just definitely one to keep an eye on for day trading. And Datadog. So Datadog a little bit more quiet on Friday compared to the rest of the market, but it has a beautiful three getting ready to cross the eight. It's used the 20, the 34, and the 50 for support and push up. Lots of room there to the next set of resistance, so take a look at Datadog. Okay, that is it for me here this morning. If you have any questions, please reach out. Heather C. at GivingTreeTrading.com.